ten. God dang. Ten? Ten! God, you know what? I'm taking my stuff. Getting the hell out of here. Look at this. I'm done with these videos. That's it. Jeez. Okay, since the last video I made another change to the helmet. Uh, on the chin area down here and the lower lip right here, what I did was I widened this whole area by three-eighths of an inch. The way it was before, it looked just a little bit too narrow for me. I mean, I've seen a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the stock pictures and all that. And uh, like I said, for me, it just came to too much of a point. So I added some Bondo on either side of these lips here and also at the chin. Uh, about three sixteenths on either side to uh, to bring this out three eighths total. I also thinned out this upper lip area. It came down a little bit further before, came down a little further onto the chin. So I've taken that up a little bit and uh, redone that little bit there. Still have to work on that a, a bit more. Uh, I will have to fill in the chin yet this little uh, indentation at the bottom is not really on the movie helmet uh, it's basically just a detail line cut in a hexagon around here it's not recessed back so far so I'm going to have to fill that in a little bit and bring this out further uh, the last thing that I want to do before I start the spot putty and fixing all these lines straightening everything out is I need to get these eyes taken care of. Uh, they're a little bit skinny uh, up and down width wise for what I need to do. Uh, if you look on the real Iron Man helmet there's actually an area inside the eye socket that is built up. It sort of steps up a little bit as it goes in. Uh, it's basically an eye socket inside the eye socket. Uh, and then you have the lens on top of that. Uh, now, in order to be able to see out of the helmet, you still have to maintain a gap at the bottom of the lens like you see there. So, if I add that step up and I add my lens here, there's going to be no gap to see out of. So, I have to widen these eyes a little bit. Uh, what I did was, I took a measurement down. Uh, I used my top line here to measure down from. I went down uh, about 9 sixteenths of an inch. That's where I wanted it to drop to at the lowest point. I also measured from over here back as far as I wanted it and made a mark. Cut some uh, blue painters tape and dropped it down to that mark and then sort of brought it back up. So I'm gonna have to cut this out, uh, take some of this material out I'll probably just use my Dremel with the little uh, grinding wheel here to get that out. Once I have that to the shape that I want, uh, I'll build that little step up, that little ridge or whatever that's inside there. And uh, I'll refit the eye lens and we'll see how much space we have to, uh, to deal with. Uh, so I'm just going to pop this out. Like I said, it's just a piece of paper. So... Uh, Enough of my jabbering, let's get uh, to cleaning up these eyes and uh, we'll see what we can do. Alright, I'll see if this works. If this doesn't work, I don't have any more sanding drums, so I'm using this little grinding wheel. If this doesn't take it off, I'll probably use this little saw blade, this high speed cutter, and just grind away. Uh, I'll take the most material out with this and then I'll get in there with a file or some sandpaper and I'll clean everything up. A lot of times when I'm trying to get in these really hard to reach areas, 
uh, I'll take a popsicle stick and wrap some sandpaper around it but sometimes even that's too big so I usually just grab my file and I'll cut a little strip of sandpaper and I'll just sort of fold that over the file that gives me a nice flat surface just like I'm using a, uh, a little sanding block. And you can get in and sand all the really tight spots uh, some of these files uh, come pretty thin even about uh, half the thickness of this so you can get in just about anywhere you need to uh, just by wrapping a little bit of paper around it keeps the uh, surface you're working on nice and flat I know it's pretty tempting sometimes just to get in there with your fingers uh, but you're gonna do more harm than good if you just get in there with your hand and sand with your fingers or just roll a piece of sandpaper up uh, you know like this and get in there because it's gonna take the shape of whatever your sandpaper is in so do it the right way it takes longer but it's worth it in the end okay I finished up inside the eyes with some sandpaper with my needle files uh, what I have to do now is I'm going to put a thin coat of Bondo inside the eyes and smooth them out once more before I start building up the, uh, the step detail uh, inside the eye socket there. You can see I did hit a couple little soft spots right here that uh, I had to dig out. Uh, you're going to run into soft spots every now and again when you're doing Pepakura. Uh, you just have to work around it. I like to uh, to dig it out as much as I can and then uh, I usually just soak it with resin pour some resin in there and fill up the hole uh, but if it's not too deep I'll just go over it with Bondo so that's what I'll do with that uh, eye socket there I need to smooth that out the other one I didn't really have uh, any breakthrough inside so I'll get that uh, Bondo mixed up, we'll layer that in, smooth them out once more, and then we can start building that detail inside. Okay, what I'm going to use to get inside these eyes with the Bondo, I have a, uh, a little dental tool here, sort of just a little spatula. Uh, I don't even know where I got this thing, but I think it'll work pretty well for spreading the Bondo inside this eye socket nice and smooth. I'm just going to spread this in, fill in that crater there, that soft spot that I had and uh, I'm just trying to keep it relatively smooth since I already did a bunch of sanding in here this little dental tool seems to be working pretty well uh, a Bondo applicator still might be better for this since it is a little bit flexible Whereas this, not so much. But it'll get the job done. Alright, let me get a little bit more. Get it in towards the back here where it needs to be. Scrape it off the front. And <coughs> get this other eye taken care of. Just filling in the imperfections. I'll uh, bring back the video when I have these done being bondoed and they're sanded for the second time. And we'll start building that detail. I've added some glazing putty inside the eye sockets here. Uh, it just makes more sense to do this now before I add that ridge detail inside. Uh, I want to get this as smooth as possible in here and right now it's to the point where I have the most space available in the eye socket to work uh, so I'll get this sanded as smooth as possible so that uh, after that ridge details in uh, all the area along here that you'll see uh, will already be smooth and I won't have to work around that ridge okay I'm about to start filling in this recessed area on the chin at the bottom here uh, I wanted to mention a little bit about uh, sticking Bondo over something that you already have primed. 
Uh, Bondo doesn't really like to stick to primer as it sits. Uh, you need to at least scuff up the primer with some sandpaper if you're putting Bondo over top of it. Same thing with your glazing putty. Uh, do not stick that straight over primer that you just sprayed on. Uh, it's not going to stick well. So that's exactly what I did underneath and on the chin area. I've sanded. I've actually sanded the primer completely off. Now you don't have to do that. You don't have to get crazy with it. Uh, at least scuff it up though. I also added just some gouges in here with uh, a file just to give it more tooth to grab onto to adhere. I've done that on the bottom as well. You can see all the gouges. Uh, so that'll make sure that my Bondo sticks on there nice and good. So I'll get that uh, smoothed out on the bottom, Bondoed up, and uh, that should do it. I'm really working the Bondo into that recess too. I want to make sure that there's no air gaps in there. Want that completely full Bondo. This will take more than one coat. This Bondo will probably shrink a little bit and uh, sink in. I have a lot left over so I'll just do it all in one shot I guess. I'll at least get this hexagon full. switched over to a larger sanding block to do this bottom jaw area. Uh, when you're doing sanding on larger flat surfaces, it doesn't really make sense to use a small block like this because you can still create uh, low spots and valleys. Uh, even though you're using a flat block, if it doesn't span the entire surface uh, from this side to this side, you can still create small indentations and low spots. Uh, so use the right size block for whatever area that you're doing don't be afraid to get a bigger block uh, if you need it I always have my block touching on either side so there's never going to be a low spot in the middle I've added some Bondo inside the eye socket area here to uh, start the step detail I've first I drew a line from the face plate I measured back all the way around and drew a line that follows the same contour as the face plate. Okay, same as on this side. That follows the same line as the face plate. Okay. What I've done is I've gone in there with some bondo and spread that out. I tried to build it up as much as I could uh, in one layer here. So you can see what I'm sort of going for with the eye socket inside an eye socket. Uh, what I have to do now is I have to get in there with my files and I have to not only smooth it out on the top this way but I also have to do it this way and make this edge 90 degrees. Uh, then I'll have to add another layer probably uh, to fill in all the low spots and uh, sand that. Now I will go up on the sides as well. You can see my line in there. Uh, I will Once I have this bottom area done smooth, flat, uh, nice sharp edge. Uh, I'll do this side and I'll do it over here. Uh, it's easier than trying to cut the corner in later if you just glob Bondo in here on all three sides uh, to try and establish a 90 degree corner. It's easier just to do one surface, get it flat, get it square, and then move on to your other surfaces. Okay, I've uh, filed and sanded inside the eye socket. I threw some more Bondo in here. This is the second layer. I haven't done anything to this eye yet. I've been working on the other one. So I'll show you where that's at. Uh, this is where we're at on the other one. I basically got in there 
cleaned everything up as best I could with my file and uh, also got in there with some sandpaper. Now luckily the uh, the measurements that I measured back that I wanted this step detail to start was the same width as my little file here. So whenever I would get in there I would use my file as a gauge. Once I seen I was back far enough that the edge of the file was even with the face plate I knew I was back far enough and I have the same reveal here all the way around the eye. I've gotten there this way, I've squared it up uh, as best I could to 90 degrees and uh, that's pretty much done. I'm not going to show you the, uh, the sides, uh, that's the same process as doing this bottom reveal. Uh, just It's going to be a little bit harder getting in there, uh, but we'll get it done. Uh, the last thing to do after that after I get these both done and finish sanded with 220, I'll use the uh, glazing, the spot filler. I'll get in there and just lightly coat these eyes once more, sand them again with some 220, and those will be just about done. So I think that's just about going to do it for this video. Uh, next video, I'll show you guys these uh, eye sockets completely finished obviously and uh, maybe I actually can get to straightening these lines out next video still have to put the ears on uh, I've had to do a little more work down at the bottom here the helmet wasn't sitting flat or it was uh, it was rocking whenever it's on the table so I've had to add probably a good eighth of an inch of bondo to this corner so I have to get that taken care of yet um, I still have to square up all these recesses. Uh, the last thing I might do actually before I uh, move on, the last revision I might say, is this top uh, little indentation here. On the movie helmet, I don't think it's really uh, indented in that far. It's just sort of cut in like a detail line. Uh, it is a little bit lower across the entire surface though. Uh, on the movie helmet, so I may bondo up here and uh, bring that out a little bit just to make it a little more accurate. But hopefully, those are the last revisions to this helmet, the last major changes I'll be making. So, uh, next video, we will move on. Sorry it took so long to get this video out. Uh, I've been really busy, I haven't had time to work on this, but uh, I'm going to try and get these videos out uh, as soon as I can for you guys. So that's it. I got to get back to work. There's the eye again. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.